So let's look at the methods for evaluating your location. As you're doing your location planning and you've narrowed it down to a couple choices, how do you decide which location to select? We talked about the locational break-even analysis and transportation method in a previous video. So now let's look at the factor rating analysis. So when it comes to factor rating analysis, we are combining both quantitative and qualitative factors. And this is one reason the factor rating analysis is so popular for decision making. So what we're going to do is we are going to pick a number of factors that we think are relevant in choosing our location. Each factor is going to need a weight. Then we're going to need to decide on um, a rating for each of those factors. And so we're going to rate them from 0 to 100. And when you do that, 100 is the best and 0 is the worst. Then what we're going to do is we're going to see how these different locations uh, compare in terms of the scores. Before you do any calculations though, you should set a minimum threshold because if you have no location that exceeds the minimum, that's when you go back to the drawing board and start evaluating brand new locations. You scrap all the choices. So let's look at how this works. Suppose you are trying to decide where to put an Olive Garden in Red Deer. So we need to look at what factors are relevant. So maybe we would consider the cost to lease the space. Maybe we would look at how much traffic volume we have. We would look at operating cost. Does it cost any different to operate from one location of another? We would look at uh, the number of parking spots that were available for our customers, and so on. So you'd pick the criteria that you think are the most important. And then you need to select weights. That, those weights need to add up to 100%. So for example, if traffic is the most important, let's give it 50% or half the weight. If the number of parking spots is second most important, maybe we give it 20%. Okay. The cost of the lease, we're going to wait, let's say, at 0.2 as well. And the operating cost, we'll give it a 0.1. So these must add up to 1 or 100%. Let's also determine that we have a minimum threshold. And so if neither of these locations are greater than 70, then we're going to search for an alternative. Next thing we do is we then rate these two locations. Remember, zero is the worst and 100 is the best. So as we look at the cost of leasing space, let's compare Gates Crossing, so essentially across the street from Tony Roma's uh, in that area that's being developed right now, or Timberlands Market, and this would be where uh, the new co-op is going in at the corner of 30th and 67th. So let's look at the cost to lease the space. A hundred would be a super deal, and zero would be a terribly expensive uh, place to lease. Now let's assume that there's a difference in the cost to lease between Gates Crossing and Timberlands Market, and that Timberlands Market is cheaper, so let's rate it as an 80 out of 100, and Gates Crossing, 60 out of 100. Okay, so these two numbers don't need to total up to 100. It's that they're each on a scale from 0 to 100, 100 being the best. And since lower lease costs are better, it'll get a higher number. So then we look at traffic volume. Well, we have more traffic going down Taylor Drive, then we do going down 67th and 30th. So for traffic, more traffic is better because that's more customers coming to your Olive Garden. So let's give this traffic for Gates Crossing a rating of 75. And for Timberlands, we'll give it a 60. Okay, remember, higher number is better. For operating costs, we expect that either location will have the same utilities, um, 
Overall expenses in terms of electricity and heat, we don't think they'll be any different. And the costs, uh, they're not too high or too low. The key here is that we think they're going to be about the same. In terms of number of parking spots, the Timberlands market has very minimal number of parking spots. More parking is better. In fact, the Olive Garden uh, company has a requirement for a certain number of parking spots. And so we say that Timberlands rates 20 out of 100 for parking. There's not a whole lot. It's already going to be crowded. Gates Crossing is still in very early development. We think that there's going to be an opportunity uh, to have lots of parking there. So now that we have our weights and our ratings, for each, for Gates Crossing and for Timberlands Market, we want to multiply our weights times our ratings. So what we would do is we would take 0.2 times 60, plus we have our 0.5 times 75, plus our 0.1 times 60, plus our 0.2 times 80. And we want to figure out what that total is. So here on my screen, I'm just going to do the quick calculation. 0.2 times 60 is 12. 0.5 times our 75 is 37 and a half. We have 0.1 times 60, so that's going to be 6. And we have our 0.2 times 80. Of course, we could probably do that in our head too. And we get 16. So now we want to total that up. 12 plus 37 and a half plus 6 plus 16. The total number is 71.5. So Gates Crossing gives us a 71.5 as its total. And this is above the threshold, so already Gates Crossing looks like a candidate. And we need to compare this, though, to the number for Timberlands Market to figure out which one is better. A higher number for your factor rating analysis is the better location. So let's do those calculations here for Timberlands Market, so 0.2 times 80, we have 0.5 times 60, 0.1 times 60, and 0.2 times 20. All right, so let's do those calculations. We have 80 times 0.2, which is 16. We have 0.5 times 60, which is 30. We have 0.1 times 60, that's 6. And we have 0.2 times 20, which is 4. And as we add these up, 46, 52, 56. Just double check ourselves here, 16 plus 30 plus 6 plus 4, 56. Notice that Timberlands Market got a 56. Okay. If Gates Crossing was also that low, we would scrap both options and look somewhere else. But because Gates Crossing is the highest of the two numbers and past our minimum threshold, we would choose Gates Crossing as the new location for our Olive Garden. The key with the factor rating analysis is to come up with the factors or criteria that are used to choose your location. The benefit of this method is we get to combine qualitative and quantitative. And we do that by rating how good each location is at this criteria. And we weight each of those criteria based on their importance. So we can take what is qualitative and give credence to it by turning it into something quantitative. So we can feel a lot more confident in our decision because we have those numbers to support it.